Welcome to the Dolls Podcast, a collaboration between students and staff in the Department of Life Sciences at Imperial College London. We're delighted you are listening and excited to be hosting this series, celebrating International Women's Week 2023. Tag along as we speak to five women in the department from varying career types and stages. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of the International Women's Week podcast. My name is Oka, and I am a year one student in biological science. During this podcast series, we will be interviewing women that are excelling in their fields. On 2023 International Women's Day is upcoming, when people celebrate the achievements of women in the fields of economy, politics, culture, and the science. This year, we invite some experts in Imperial to talk about their life and wishes in their careers. So, hi, Dr. Loli Kota Loizo. Thank you for joining our podcast. We're very excited to hear from you and deliver your opinions to our listeners. So, would you like to start off by telling us what motivated you to pursue a career as a research associate at Imperial College London? Hello, Orca. Thank you very much for inviting me to your podcast. I am very interested in studying microorganisms, such as viruses, bacteria, and fungi, and how they interact with their hosts. For example, are they pathogenic, and do they cause disease, or are they harmless or even beneficial? My ultimate aim in my research is to use microorganisms to solve medical and ecological problems, to protect people and the environment by combating antibiotic resistance or through biological control of diseases or other pests. I chose to become a scientist because I felt research would offer an outlet to both my problem-solving skills and my creativity. I also loved the idea that I may discover something new and I may develop it into something useful, for example, a new therapeutic approach. One of the perks of the job that I particularly enjoy is the opportunity to travel and meet with other scientists. This can be in the context of a scientific meeting in the UK or abroad, or my visiting another university such as Harvard or Stanford in the US, or the Huazong Agricultural University in China. Usually the focus is on discussing the scientific advances and progress in the field, but I have also been invited to present on other pertinent topics with a social dimension such as women in science and student life in the UK. That's really nice. Thank you. Do you have a particular role model who inspired you to work in this field? As a child, I used to read a lot about and become fascinated by the work of scientists, such as the ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle and his classification of living things, Charles Darwin, who proposed the theory of evolution, Gregor Mendel, who demonstrated the laws of genetic inheritance, and of course, the microbiologist Louis Pasteur and Alexander Fleming. Regrettably, I did not get many opportunities to familiarize myself much with the work of female scientists, apart perhaps from Rosalind Franklin and her contribution to elucidating the structure of the DNA double helix. However, The people with the most influence on me were not those I read about, but those I worked with, my mentors and my colleagues. And through our real life interactions, they inspired me to become an independent thinker inside and outside the laboratory, to form a vision about my research field, to adopt a multidisciplinary approach to science, to be supportive of my own group of students and young scientists. Interestingly, negative role models inspired me almost as much as positive role models. By demonstrating behaviors I found detrimental and would choose not to adopt in the future. Very nice, thank you. Let's assume that if you were president of Imperial, what changes would you like to make? I joined Imperial 
almost 10 years ago, towards the end of my PhD. And uh, it is fair to say that Imperial is where I came to my own as a scientist. However, I have noticed that Imperial and other UK universities are becoming increasingly money-oriented during the last 10 years, and that for an academic, the ability to obtain large grants is considered more important than scientific publications, quality of teaching, standing in the field, and the concept of productivity, the output divided by the input, is very much overlooked. Funds are normally allocated by ranking proposals through peer review, which was perfectly reasonable in the past when over 50% of the bids would be successful, but much less viable now that success rate for most competitive funding schemes are less than 20%. The current system of funding allocation has been increasingly criticized for its detrimental effects on research, including quality, integrity, reproducibility, continuity, innovation, and breadth, but also because the overall process is financially costly, time-consuming, stressful, potentially unfair, and distracts researchers from science itself. As one of the top 10 universities internationally and a recognized world leader, Imperial is in a unique position to design and implement alternative strategies that bring back the focus on research and teaching while financially sustaining the university. So if I were president of Imperial, this is what I would aim for, although I know that a fundamental reform will require longer than a day. And full disclosure, I am heavily involved in the current funding system as an applicant, a reviewer, and a grant panel member. And now, a preview must be a role model for many students studying in the same field, such as me. And what advice would you like to give to a woman in the department who want to pursue a career in biological science? Biological research is inherently difficult because we're attempting to unravel nature's secrets. When I first got involved in science, I really did not appreciate how many years of work it would take and how slow is the process of moving from basic science towards applied science. Being patient and maintaining a positive attitude is essential because experiments do not always work or give results immediately. Therefore, a scientist really needs to be persistent and not give up. Research is becoming even more difficult in the current ultra-competitive environment, so you need to ensure that you maintain visibility in your field by regularly publishing your work in recognized peer-reviewed journals and presenting at scientific conferences. Beyond scientific knowledge, teamwork and leadership skills are necessary, since researchers do not work in isolation, but in small or large groups. Based on your personal interests, explore other relevant activities, such as teaching and supervision, uh, science communication, as you are doing already, public outreach, external consultancy, and industry collaborations. This will help you grow both as a scientist and as a person. For example, I used to be very introverted and shy, and I really had to cultivate my presentation skills. At a more personal level, you need to take good care of yourself to ensure your physical, mental, and emotional well-being. I would recommend to engage in whatever physical activities you enjoy. For me, this include dancing and yoga, pilates, cycling, and swimming, but it could be anything that you like. And also to spend quality time with your loved ones, like your family and your friends. And I need to warn you that expectations are often unrealistic for young researchers, and resilience is probably the most crucial trait that you need to succeed. So play the long game and don't give up. And uh, finally, do you have a fun fact about your role or research? Viruses, whose name is derived from a Latin word meaning venom or poison, 
generally have a bad reputation since they are the causative agents of numerous devastating diseases in humans, animals and plants. Just think of the recent COVID-19 pandemic. However, my research focuses on beneficial friendly viruses that infect fungi. These viruses are called mycoviruses and do not kill and do not harm their hosts, but may be used to influence the interaction between pathogenic fungi and their plant, insect, or human hosts to our advantage. And this is an understudied emerging area of research that will help us combat fungal infections in the future. And that's the end of the interview. Thank you, Dr. Loli Kotalozo, for joining our podcast. Thank you, Orca.